ahead and just pick a card. In fact, name a card. Steve? Perfect. This will be Steve. Steve, that's Steve. There he is. And we're gonna leave Steve on top of the deck and put him somewhere into the middle. Now, here's the thing about Steve is that if you call him, now that you've named him, if you call him by his name, uh, something incredible happens. Check this out. Oh, Steve. Focus. Steve, come on. Come on, Steve. There he is. He's a little shy. Steve. Come on. Oh, there he comes. Just like that. Out of the middle of the deck, your card, Steven. Welcome to the video. Now, for those of you who know me, you know I'm a big fan of fun toys, illusions, props, uh, just basically gadgets. I like to collect gadgets, whether it's puzzles or impossible objects. And I thought today I would share some of my favorite recent ones and some that we've already reviewed with you. And right before we get into that, I just wanna say this video is sponsored by Vera. I know what you're thinking, this is another social media platform you have to sign up for. And yes, but before we get into that, I got a question for you. What made you post photos to the other platforms in the first place? Was it the algorithm? Was it the ads, the bots, the fake likes and comments? No, it was a place where you could share your art, your photography with other like-minded people. But since then, the platform's been riddled with terrible trends and just things you didn't ask for. But now there's Vero. Vero is an algorithm-free, ad-free social media platform that you can post your photos to. It doesn't crop your photos, so you can post your full portraits and landscape photos in the same slide. And best of all, your feed's in chronological order, so you're not gonna get any unwanted content. Simply choose the hashtag you wish to follow, and there you go. It's not only a fantastic place to share photography, but also movie reviews, book reviews, restaurant reviews, whatever you like. And one of the things that I enjoy most about it is, and this is gonna sound weird, it isn't addictive. We're just glued to our devices day in, day out on these platforms, mindlessly scrolling through content and just kind of wasting our time. There's a place where I go in and I post my photo and then I have a look around at the other people I follow and check my feed out and then I'm gone. It's not a place where you mindlessly scroll, it's a place where you deliberately go to. And that's just so refreshing. We've even got a hashtag over there called hashtag deck of the day where hundreds of you have been posting your photos of playing cards which i really enjoy so keep doing that i highly encourage you guys to check it out so click the link below or download the app just give it a shot just try it out if you don't like it whatever but i encourage you to try it out especially if you're into photography so i hope to see you there and uh back to the video this first one is my favorite purchase recently it's by a company called tcc magic and it's called the mystery stick two magicians is otherwise known as the pom-pom illusion and I'll give you guys a demonstration right now. Check this out. This illusion is, I mean, it looks simple, but it's, it's quite complex. See, if I pull the string here, it raises the bead over there. But if I pull the string here, it raises the bead over there. Now, this is still attached to this, obviously, and this one is still attached to this. Um, the other thing is, you might, you might think that there's some type of interconnecting string, but there isn't. So is it a magic trick, or is it actual magic? The first description of this trick was actually in 1729. Uh, in a book from Japan, the second volume of Tawaguragusa, a book of games by Q, and the name there was Kayoidama, which loosely translates to back and forth balls. Something remarkable happened in the year 1912 where an independent reinvention appears. So roughly 180 years later in England, and there's been no sign of these two inventions or inventors even hearing about each other. Chris Van Byrne created a pocket version of this trick, and then later throughout the years, it was made famous by Ali Bongo. So this thing's really been around for almost 300 years and it still stumps people to this day. Next up is something fascinating and visually almost impossible. This is a coin. Here's the coin box. 
and here is the coin. Let me read you the description. This was actually released during IPP, International Puzzle Party. And here's the backstory behind it. Use the ribbon to pick up the Chinese magic mirror and hold it by the edges. Avoid touching the polished surface. Notice that the polished surface is a convex mirror. Hold the mirror so that the sun is reflected onto a white surface, such as the bottom of this container. An unexpected magic image appears. So this was apparently invented in China over 2000 years ago. And this one particularly was created by Jerry Slocum for the IPP24 in Tokyo. I've been fascinated with this type of technology used in metal. I've been looking into it myself and I happened to stumble across this at an auction. The image that it reveals here is like this complex puzzle looking item. I guess maybe the logo for the IPP or some type of puzzle box. But what's fascinating is that when you look at the coin itself, there's visibly no markings. There's no scrapes. There's, it's just minuscule, minor little indentations that are so specifically arranged that when the light hits it, it creates this amazing photograph. I just really am fascinated with this and the implications that you could use this within a magic trick are really great. Next is more of a desktop toy. Now I'm a big fan of desktop toys and this one in particular. Got this one on Etsy. Uh, it isn't exactly like the perpetual motion device, supposed perpetual motion device that I've featured in other videos, but it has that same sort of look to it. And with the popularity of digital art being created and impossibilities being made, rendered into video, uh, this kind of resembles that art, sort of like life imitating art, imitating life. I don't know. But rather simply, it's just a machine that keeps these beads going and it's really fun and hypnotizing to look at. Again, I'm, I've got so many interesting items, I just never know how to integrate them properly into videos. So a video like this is just so perfect. I'm very happy that I can do this. This next one was sent to me from NKD. You might know them from all the gigantic, amazing puzzles that they produce, uh, but they also produce this. Check that out. Handmade claw. Well, this actually comes in a kit. Uh, they sent me a whole bunch of them. So I've got maybe five or six that I can give away in this video. If you'd like one, just leave a comment below. Make sure you're subscribed and like this video. I'll choose five of you and I'll send you guys one of these that you can build yourself. Again, just wacky. I don't really know what I would use this for. Very satisfying click on it though. Yeah. I don't know. This next object I picked up at an auction, a magic auction. Um, there are many magic auctions that happen all the time and sometimes you'll find really interesting gems or illusions or ideas that kind of got lost in time. This is one of them. This is the money maker or the money machine. When you open the box, it begins to print money. As you can see, there's a roll of blank paper being turned into dollar bills. And this goes on forever and ever and ever. And ever. And the base of it is then filled with all of these dollar bills. Now, obviously this is a pretty rudimentary toy and I'm sure most of you can figure out how it works, but it's just such a cool design and such an interesting idea that you could just print money. I don't know why I bought this, but there you have it. If you could print $1 bills forever, uh, what would you end up buying? Let me know. This next one, this is known as Euler's Disc. I kept pronouncing it Euler's Disc in one of my shorts and a lot of you guys got really angry. So this is Euler's Disc. It is a small disc that you rotate on a glass or mirrored surface, but the disc is made in a way that it loses the least amount of kinetic energy. Basically, it's shaped and weighted in a way that keeps the disc spinning for as long as it physically can. Now, some people think this is very relaxing. Other people think it's anxiety inducing. I'm somewhere in the middle. The sound is pretty hypnotizing and it's pretty visually stunning to watch something like this go. It goes on for a surprising amount of time. Uh, I won't bore you with the entire
Next, I wanna talk about an artist called Imbu. He makes really cool art. I'm a big fan of collecting eclectic or just eccentric styles of art. I feature them on my channel, but I also put them in my home, around the office, and I just love a good conversation piece. In fact, I use his notebook on a regular basis. Now you might be familiar with this book, but what you're not familiar with is the Parental Advisory Edition. So it's just a notebook, and I thought that was really clever. There's his logo there. I'm a big fan, so I'm just gonna give him a shout out. If you guys wanna check him out, I left his link below. I've also got this really cool Coca-Cola slash Virgin Mary bottle, which I think is almost like a commentary on capitalist society, how we follow uh, both religion and corporations in the same way. Whatever it means to you, it's supposed to make you think, and it kind of does, and it's also kind of funny. He's also got this Vitruvian man made of brass that is in a Petri dish, which I'm a big fan of. Again, I think it's just an interesting thing, and if you enjoy that type of thing, you should definitely check him out. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions about, about this. I featured this in a bunch of my videos. It kind of has that old style sort of lamp look, but at the same time, it's hyper modern and made of brass. And you can touch it to turn it on, which is pretty cool. And it kind of flickers too. I've got these all over my house. I've got them all over the office. I use them all the time. Uh, so I thought I'd share this with you. It's called Wick. Wick. When creating videos, I love little accent mood lighting. This is something I've used a lot. I've also used this a lot. This is uh, what's supposed to look like a book, but acts as a lamp and it's also magnetic, so you can sort of hang it up at different places. I don't know what you'd use this for, but I love it to death. I think these things are so cool. I've also got a mini version here, check that out. And once again, these are magnetic, so you can just kind of stick them to things if you need that extra little soft light. Or if you just want to tell a cool story. <laughs> And speaking of accent lights, I also have this. By the way, I left the link to that below. You can check it out at Art of Play. This is also from Art of Play, and I've featured this before, but since we're talking about really cool lights to have around the office, uh, this is one of them. Look at that. Makes a cool sound too. Uh, this is a rock light, what looks like a cracked sort of rock light, but great for product photography. And it's also a speaker. What else do you want? Look at this, look how cool that looks. You just leave that on your desk like that. Did the batteries just die out? Oh, maybe. Gotta charge that up. There you go. Hey, I never said any of these things were gonna be useful. I just said they're cool and I wanted to share them with you. So let me know your thoughts. That's all I got for you today. Thanks again to Vero for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna go check out some more of my photography, I'll be posting to Vero. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Change of pace, which I like, and we'll uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Peace.